Today, Cody, my wife, and I are on the McCullumy River, and there you can see Cody going over by my wife there in the hat. She's relaxing in the nice cool water. And what I think I'm going to do today is do a little gold prospecting. The river is at unusually low levels, and I'm panning down so that you can see this bedrock right here. And what I'm going to try to do is excavate the, uh, the sand and the gravel out of these pockets, out of these holes in the bedrock. This is a rather large hole right here. There's a lot of big rocks to remove first, but then I'll take a look at the sand and gravel underneath that. And then there's a lot of uh, smaller holes also. And these would be perhaps good places for the heavier concentrates, such as gold, to collect. I'm hoping that uh, these, these holes would form uh, whirlpools when the water is flowing over them and that the gold and heavier particles would drop down into the holes. Here's a medium sized hole that's got some uh, sand in it that looks promising. I'm not interested in moving a lot of rock and gravel and sand today. I just want to look for a small amount that hopefully has a high concentration or a high likelihood that there will be some gold in it. Okay, this will give you an idea of the water flowing by, the spot that I picked to do a little prospecting. Now what I've done is cleaned out this hole in the rock, in the bedrock, as much as possible with uh, my shovel and my hands and the very smallest particles that are difficult to scoop up in your hands, I'm using this, uh, this pump right here. You can see that red cylinder, that's the, uh, that's the pump, and then the hoses, one hose goes down into the bottom, and then the other hose comes up into the bucket right here. This next hole I have high hopes for. As you can see, there are no rocks visible right now because I've removed them. Some of them were very large rocks, I'll show you some of them over here that I discarded into a big pile. But uh, because they were so large, my guess is that they had to be deposited in this hole a long time ago at the time of some very large flood that would have been able to move such large rocks. So anyhow, all I've got left is water, and at the bottom I can feel there's a lot of uh, sand and gravel down there. So I think what I'll first do is use this bucket to scoop out a bunch of the water and then start removing the sand. Well, as you can see, I've scooped out most of the water and gotten down to the bedrock. And at the very bottom, where the uh, little black shovel is, there's a very fine concentration of sand. So that's what I'm going to be scooping up and panning. As you can see, I've cleaned this hole out completely. All the water is gone, of course, and all the sand and gravel. If there was any gold in here, I've got it in my bucket now. Well, here's the spot that I was getting my sand and gravel. Right in the middle of the frame now, you can see, I think, uh, a hole in the bedrock. The water is washing over it right now, and behind it there's some white water. But this, uh, this hole in the bedrock turned out to be quite deep. In fact, as I dug down there into the sand and gravel that was collected in it, I got down so far that uh, I had to lay down in the water and extend my arm so far down into the hole that my uh, cheek was actually touching the, the water as it was flowing over the rock. If the hole was any deeper, I would have had to have a snorkel in order to reach far enough down to get the last bit of sand and gravel out of this hole. Anyhow, I'm pretty hopeful that this is going to produce a, at least a little bit of gold. It looks like an ideal spot. The very bottom of this hole was solid bedrock. And I got all the way down to the bottom and scooped the last bit out. So. Any gold that was uh, in there is now in my bucket. And I'm going to take that back home, classify it, and do some, do some panning. 
And I think you can see that the uh, top of this hole, where the water is flowing over it, forms a little bit of a whirlpool. Well, I'm standing directly over the hole now, and I think you can see how when the water flows over the hole, it forms a, a little bit of turbulence, a little bit of a whirlpool, and certainly slows down. And this is the key, or one of the keys, for trapping gold. Because when the water slows down, anything that's heavy in the, in the water at that time is going to sink. And if it sinks into a hole like this, it becomes trapped. And so that's exactly the kind of uh, action that we're looking for, is the gold slowing down, sinking in the water, and becoming trapped in a crack or a hole like this. Now this is what the river looks like immediately downstream from where the hole is. As I was laying down in the water and excavating the gravel out of the hole, I was in a little bit of a danger from being washed away. I had to keep one hand on the rock here in order to stabilize myself so I wouldn't be swept down river. I don't go gold prospecting to strike it rich although that's always a possibility. The main reason my family, friends, and I like to look for gold is to get outdoors, have some fun, and have a little adventure. Another thing I like to do is test theories. For example, this video was based on the theory that a hole in bedrock may create a whirlpool and thus cause heavy particles, such as gold, to sink into the hole and be trapped. The results of our test samples from several holes are not dramatic but I think they do support the accuracy of the basic theory. Right, this is a close-up of the bottom of my pan, and you can see this little uh, red rock against the black background of the pan. And this is a garnet. It's a very small garnet, but uh, the interesting thing about this is that there's a, a garnet mine way upstream, way at the headwaters of the McCullumy River, and undoubtedly this little piece of garnet came all the way from that mine at one point. This is a necklace that I made for my wife some time ago. The stone in the middle is a uh, much larger garnet that I found near the garnet mine a long time ago. The metal, I'm not sure what the metal is, but I found it from an old burned down miner shack. And this was a, a lump of metal that was left on a rock there at the miner shack. And so I put these two things together and made a necklace out of it. Well, these are obviously sinkers, and we found quite a few of these in most of the holes that we excavated. So this tends to support the theory that heavy objects, when they're trapped in a, in a whirlpool or they go over one of these holes in the rock, tend to sink and be trapped in the holes. Here are some more heavy objects that we found after panning the sand and gravel that were in these holes. There are garnets, many garnets in fact, that we found in most of the holes. They're very small, but notice that they're rounded on the edges. This indicates that they've been tumbled in the river for quite some distance. And we only found two very small pieces of gold. Now the garnets we found and the gold are so small that they didn't have any monetary value. But I think they do help to prove that when heavy objects flow over one of these whirlpools, they tend to sink and be trapped in the holes underneath. This is another very small mineral that we found while panning the contents of the holes. I'm not sure what this mineral is, but it is heavy at least because we found it at the bottom of the pan. Now, there is a silver mine, or at least a silver deposit, fairly close to where we were excavating these holes. So there is a possibility that this is a little piece of silver. This is the end of the video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. Till next time, thanks for watching.